we will start momentarily. We have a few technical difficulties for that. Good morning and welcome to our Good Friday service today. I'm Reverend Susan, and I'm so grateful to be gathered here in this time and space with all of you. There are people here from Knox Presbyterian Church and Knox United Church and other places that I don't even know where they're from, and, I, and I'm just glad that, uh, that we have this time together. I'm grateful to be working today, collaborating with um, Ann Miller, who's the minister at uh, Knox Presbyterian Church, and uh, she uh, provided us today with our readings and our monologues, which we are grateful for. And Ann and I hope that this will be a meaningful time of quiet reflection as we hear and experience the Good Friday story told through the voices of those whose parts were told in scripture and how they come alive for us in this time. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with the building, uh, there is a washroom on this level, just outside the, the west door, um, just go around the corner and it's right there and there's also washrooms downstairs. And there's also um, an area downstairs if you need to just separate yourself, if you need some space, um, perhaps someone needs to run around, and you can go downstairs. And, and there's also a playpen and there's uh, toys just outside uh, the door right here. So please make yourself at home and uh, know that you are welcome in this space. Knox United Church is located on the unceded territory of the Haudenosaunee Ga and Anishinaabek peoples, Treaty 29, 1827. And with this acknowledgement, we lift up the hard work of building right relationship with our Indigenous siblings. May it be so. Please join me now for our call to worship. Let us remember. 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 How in the midst of all that Jesus still chose love. Let us worship Holy God. Now let us sing together our opening hymn from Voices United 147, What Wondrous Love Is This?
Jesus. Reverend Susan said to work and worship in partnership together as Christians of a common faith. And because it is Good Friday, Good Friday brings us to confession. It belongs to confession. For on this day, we hold up to the light everything that went wrong 2,000 years ago. And as we do, we are reminded of everything that is going wrong in the present day. So we breathe deeply. We bow our heads. We speak the truth out loud about who we long to be. And we trust that God is already reaching out for us as we speak. And knowing that, let us pray together. The words of the honest speak. God of unfathomable mercy, if we were there, we'd like to think that we would have defended you. We'd like to think that we would have stopped the guards and silenced the mockery, protected your body, and defended your name. However, if we were honest with ourselves, we probably would have been at the edge of the crowd silent and afraid. How often are we silent and afraid? How often do we wait for the stones to cry out for us? Forgive us, please forgive us. Amen. So this morning we have some black strips of cloth and Reverend Susan's going to hand those out to you. And you were invited as a sign of confession and of whatever is in your heart that you want to leave at the cross, um, to take one of those, and I'll invite you forward in a moment. These black strips represent the things we have done and the things we've left undone, the things we hoped we would not have been tempted to do, and the things we had hoped we could have been brave enough to have followed through with. These strips represent the loss, the grief, the sorrows, the pain, the unbearable. We will place them on the cross. We will give them over to God and to the sacrifice Jesus has made so that we may be truly forgiven and freed from our sorrow. May we learn to forgive each other and ourselves as well. So as you receive your strips, we're going to ask you to be leaving lots of space for safety and physical distancing, but as you are ready, come forward and place your strip on the cross and then return to your seat. <coughs>
place on the cross. Even while being met with cruelty and violence, Jesus overflows with truth and grace. He sees those around him. He speaks connection and belonging into existence. He offers forgiveness. Friends, if this is true from the cross, it is certainly true here. We are surrounded by grace. We are held in love. We are forgiven over and over again. That truth never changes. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing together a song called Come and Fill. It's a Teze song. Andrew's going to play it through once, and then I will sing it once. And if you learned it at that point, you can sing with me. But after I've sung it once, we'll sing it all together two more times. he was crucified, Jesus gathered with his friends for a meal. Jesus also took the opportunity to share his final important teachings of his earthly life. He began by washing their feet. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Then Jesus predicted his betrayal, spoke of God and how there was a place for all with God, taught them of the Holy Spirit that would come and help them and be with them forever. He told them that he was the vine and that they were the branches and that he loved them as his father had loved him. He told them that in a while they would see him no more, but then after a little while they would see him again. And he explained that they would be sad, but that their grief would turn to joy. It was all very strange for his friends, and they didn't fully understand. But Jesus comforted them, and then he prayed. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for all believers. And then Jesus prayed, Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. 
Let us now sing together 133, Go to Dark Gethsemane. by the state, God who offered love and grace even from the cross, we are at a loss for words. What do we say, what do we do with this day? The air is heavy, our hearts are heavy, the suffering of this world feels particularly close, spilling out all over us. And yet, even in this space, we know you are moving. Even in this space, we know that this is not the end. Give us the heart to hear this story and the courage to let it change us. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Jesus went out with his disciples to a garden where they often met together. Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place and that they would go there. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing that all this was to happen, came forward and asked them, Who are you looking for? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Judas was standing with them. When Jesus said this, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked, Who are you looking for? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. So if you were looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the words he had said. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me.
I don't know when it happened, but things changed somehow. At first he was strong, confident, outspoken. I had such high hopes, finally a leader to throw off the Romans. But just when the time was right, at the height of his popularity, he withdrew. He became quiet, almost introspective. I thought a bit of a push would help him to reach for greatness. You know, pass on a bit of information about his movements and make a bit on the side for me. And then watch him rise to victory when they came for him. Only it didn't work out that way. He let them take him. You'll betray me, Judas, he said. I wonder how he knew. I thought I'd been discreet. But I didn't expect it to turn out the way it did. Then Peter, who had brought a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in the sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Peter and another disciple followed behind. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he was allowed to go into his courtyard with Jesus. But Peter was left standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple went out spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. She said to him, You are also one of this man's disciples, aren't you? No, I am not. The slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter was standing with them to keep warm. They asked him, Aren't you also one of his disciples? I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked him, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? No. At that moment, the cock crowed. What was I thinking? I expected so much more from myself. Oh, at the table it was easy. When Jesus talked about being betrayed and arrested and dying, I was angry and protective. I'll fight for you, Lord, I said. I'll die for you. I thought he was just frightened and emotional when he replied. No, Peter. Before the cock crows three times, you will deny knowing me. Deny him? I wouldn't have thought it possible. But that was then. Now I know it's true. When it finally came down to it, I couldn't fight for him. I couldn't die for him. I couldn't even answer the question. Yes, I know him. I follow him. I believe in him. As they led him away, he looked at me. Those eyes. I expected anger and judgment, but there was only love. In his eyes, there was only ever love. And 
invite you to remain seated as we sing, Jesus, Remember Me, hymn number 148. We're going to sing it twice. spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. Then one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They didn't go inside to avoid defiling themselves so that they could still eat the Passover meal. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They said, if he wasn't a criminal, we wouldn't have handed him over to you. Well, you take him and judge him according to your law. They said, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he said the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered his headquarters, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom was from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? I am Pilate. I have the responsibility to administer the emperor's government here in this place. It is a post that isn't considered to be a very good assignment why third-grade officials get sent to places like this. But I try to make the best of it when things happen. Well, take today, for example. They bring in front of me a man who, as, well, as far as I can tell, has done nothing wrong whatsoever. And they expect me, as the emperor's representative, to accommodate them by, by killing an innocent man. Of course, well, part of the art of diplomacy and governance is the ability to find ways to accommodate those governed. So while there was no real reason to execute this man, I allowed him to be crucified. It is a way for us all to be able to get along. He went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. 
And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, striking him in the face, saying, Hail, Hail King of the Jews! The Jews. Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The crowd stood firm, saying, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. The one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called Gabbatha. It was about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. Away with him! Away with him! Away with him. Crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? We, we have, have no, no king but the emperor. emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. I had been so excited that it was time to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. There were thousands of Jewish people here, and there was so much to do to prepare for it. I should have known better than to allow the two men into the courtyard. The one denied knowing this Jesus character, but I know he was lying. Just imagine claiming to be the Son of God. Why would someone say something so blasphemous? The whole celebration has been ruined by this imposter. Why would he meddle with our traditions and our faith? And Pilate tried to save him. With all of the crowd yelling at him that this man deserved to be crucified, he finally relented. I'm just so glad that things will be back to normal real soon. They took Jesus and made him carry the cross by himself. He went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side of him. Pilate had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. 
It was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Don't write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. But Pilate said, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, which was seamless and woven in one piece. They said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. We're going to sing together verses 1 and 2 of hymn 144, Were You There? My name doesn't matter. I am simply a soldier in the Emperor's army, another centurion doing his duty. But I was on duty that day, and I remember how I felt when I saw how the rest of my troop was treating this man who had been condemned. See, the army is not a tradition in my family. I am the first who was able to get into the military, so it's important that I do a good job. I come from a large, poor family, so I'm able to help support them with my pay. But not growing up in a military family means that there are certain things that I simply don't understand, and things that I'm not used to, like the way they taunted and abused this man. It seemed to me that he was in bad enough shape having been whipped, and that they didn't need to do any more to him. The rest of the guys began to abuse him in this way, and while I hated to see it, I also knew that they are simply things you have to do if you are one of the guys. This man is dying, and we make it into a sport.
Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he sent to fulfill scripture, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews didn't want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was such a solemn day. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two who were on either side of Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. These things occurred to fulfill the scriptures that none of his bones shall be broken, and they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, he asked Pilate to let him take away Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, came with Joseph, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. There was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in it was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. I will never forget that day. I think of Jesus' family and close friends who I know would have stood watching him suffer on the cross. I'm ashamed that I couldn't be there. I know that had the Jews seen me, I would have faced the consequences. But I knew I had to do something and I couldn't bear to think of him, not having a decent burial. Nicodemus helped me, and we wrapped his broken body and put him in the tomb we found next door. I couldn't have done it on my own because everything was so heavy. We could barely move the stone into the foot-wide channel to seal the tomb. The stone probably weighed 2,000 pounds, and even though we were pushing it downhill, it still was almost impossible. Still, it was a small thing to do for the Master. If I hadn't done anything that day for Jesus, I could not have forgiven myself. We're going to sing together. 
together verses four and five of Where You Have Been. <laughs> shows us the worst in humanity, violence inflicted on the innocent, shame poured out in excess, mockery for the sake of mockery, and abandonment of those we love. We believe that Jesus shows us the best in humanity, grace where grace is undeserved, humility in the face of honor, justice in the face of oppression, Love that overcomes. So today, as one voice, we choose the latter. We choose love. We choose grace. We choose one another. We choose to remember. Let it be so. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, you have come into the darkness of our world that we may feel your presence, even in our despair. God, hear the prayers of our needlessness, neediness. You have come to go with us through the valleys of the shadow of death. God, here are the prayers of our weakness. You have come to lift up those who have fallen and to sustain those who suffer. God, here are the prayers of our pain. You have come to comfort those who are afflicted. God, here are the prayers of our bereavement. You have come to sustain us when our tomorrows seem bleak and empty. God, here are our prayers of our fear. You have come to bring strength and courage to face the tomorrows of our lives. God, here are the prayers of our hope. You have come to lead us into the light of renewal and life. God, here are the prayers of our hearts. Amen. Join me now as we sing from Voices United 149, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
We will gather back here Sunday morning at 1030, and I hope to see many of you here. As we leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit, and may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go in peace, full to the brim. Amen. I invite you, coming out of this holy space and time, to leave when you are ready in silence. And if you want to greet each other, we ask that you do that down the stairs and outside so that those who need the quiet on this day can have the quiet and reflection that they need this morning. Peace be with you.